This uh, tree here, uh, we call it minera, and uh, it produces fruit, usually around March. It starts off green and then it goes uh, orangey colour. <clears throat> and usually you can see it with the fruit on. It's very sweet. Uh, you can just eat the uh, fruit and this little black seed attached to the fruit. And you, you can grind that down to make flour in a damp. Uh, a little damp like this. Uh, traditionally our people used to eat small things. Uh, because that seed, it swells in your stomach. So you can't eat too much of it. So uh, since it uh, gets in your stomach, it swells. And it's very heavy, you know. A bit like, you know, rye bread. It's similar to rye bread. This is a gum tree. We call it widder. We use this for cooking. You can cook, you cook your meat in it, you know, wrap it up and, and put it in the, in the ground. But also uh, used as a table too. It's traditionally used as, as, as a table. So you put all these leaves down and you put the hot food on there. And when you put the hot food on there, the eucalyptus smell goes through the meat, the food, and, and the flies don't like that smell. So it keeps the flies away too. And plus it keeps the uh, food off the uh, ground. This is the eager tree, and this is where the eager water got, got its name. But it only grows in the northern part of the Flinders Ranges. And uh, this is a very old tree, and the fruit, summer fruit, they call it native orange, but I don't know why, because maybe it's the size of uh, orange, but it's, it's about this big. Uh, good season and, it, and when you split it open it's, it's green from outside and you actually can smell it from if you're sitting at the shop you, you can actually smell it if, you, if the breeze is blowing that way uh, when it's ready to you know, harvest and uh, it's got a very sweet smell about it but inside it's yellow yellow like a bit like mango and then uh, it's got a lot of seeds like a pomegranate and uh, you can eat the seeds or you can just, uh, they used to want to crush down to make, you know, make damper too. It flowers first, you get the yellow flower and then the, the it'll fruit after that. So a lot of our people use these sort of plants as like, uh, like a bit of a, and spice, spice the food up a bit. It's peppery, used for cooking them. And uh, there are many plants that uh, uh, people use for, you know, for food and for medicine. This is used for uh, cooking too. You know, you can wrap food up in this, and or put it in the cavity of the, you know, kangaroo or, or whatever animal you're cooking. Just in this area here. You know, you can find, you know, food and, and just imagine how, before they bought the cattle and sheep in the area, there were many plants that our people use for medicine and for food and, you know, native animals that get soft feet. Introduced animals came with hoofs. You know, they walked in lines and created uh, dust, you know, a pad, and uh, eventually it just blows away or when it rains, it washes away and it causes, you know, erosion, you know. But also with the cattle and sheep, when they put down boars for water, and uh, for instance, one sheep uh, drinks about about six gallons of water a day, and, and just imagine twenty thousand of them, you know, drinking all this water. Therefore, the water table has dropped, and therefore some of our plants has disappeared. Also, the cattle and sheep got a different jaw you know, to, uh, to the native animals. You know, they ripped the plant out uh, as they're eating it. But the, uh, the kangaroo and the hemio and that, the native animals, they just nibble on it and just take the top off for it allowed to you know, grow again. So, this land is suited for the kangaroo and the hemio. And, Hmm. Yeah. This bark here is used for a plate. Just rip it off the gum tree and used for putting your food on it and uh, even carrying, you know, seeds.
carry seeds in it because some of our people used to put it over the fire and it softens the bark and then you can put it in shape you can make a little dish out of it or you're going to carry a baby in it this one here is what we call the uti it's the kwangdong tree it always grows near other trees too it's like it needs an oast tree to grow and it fruits about September uh, and, you, and the fruit is about that big but it depends on the season and what we do is uh, we get a big seed in it uh, we dry it out and we actually make uh, jam in it, out of it now you know, dry it out uh, sun dry it and then uh, make jam or you know, ice cream topping or you can do anything you know, with it I use it as chutney you know, for your uh, meat or you know, food this tree here is used for a uh, source of flour yeah. uh, we call it minga see the little seeds they grow when they grind down and baked in the ground this is what we call a uh, mayaka it's a vine that grows on a tree and it produces fruit like this. Uh, uh, you can eat it, you know, eat it straight, straight like it. This one's a bit old. Mm. When it's younger, the fruit tastes a bit like uh, sweet broccoli. You know broccoli? You half cooked broccoli. The old ones, we normally uh, bake it in the ground, in the, in the uh, fire. You give the fruit from up there, but the vine grows down into the, you can probably see the vine, see this? If you dig down there, about you know, a foot, get some uh, roots, you get the main root, and you get roots going off like that, you pull them off, and what happens is, you can eat them, it's like potato. In a sweet potato, you can eat them, or you can bake them, or just eat them or like you know, raw, but you pull them off, it uh, slows the process of this vine killing this tree, but also the roots will grow back off the main one, and uh, next time you come around again, you can you know, pull some more off. But, uh, and also, it'll uh, produce more fruit too. Okay.